The Taliban has complete control over Afghanistan. While experts have been predicting this for quite a while, many even calling it inevitable, the speed at which the Taliban took over has surprised one and all. Now there are hundreds of questions about the future of Afghan society, about what role countries in the region will play, what role, if any at all, US and the Western powers have. We'll be talking about these questions in this episode of Mapping Fault Lines. We are joined by Prabir Prakash. Prabir, from last week when we talked about the situation in Afghanistan, the Taliban was at the gates of Kabul and within a few days, they have basically taken over the whole country except for maybe a small bit of land in the Panjshir Valley. Ashraf Ghani has fed the country. There are discussions on who will form the next government, what will be the judicial system, what will be the role of women, media, etc. So tons of questions, of course. But I think for our viewers, the most important thing might be what the Taliban is saying right now in terms of what it will do and what is likely to be its policy in the coming days? Well, that's a big question. And I don't think anybody has an answer to that question. But I think immediate target for Taliban, and of course, we can't put ourselves in their shoes. But if you are in Taliban shoes for a moment, you would think the main issue is how to stabilize the country as a whole. And that's the key issue at the moment for them. And how do you make the economy function? Because it's, it has now no money. The Americans, the IMF has seized whatever money they had. The IMF is not giving it any money, whatever it's supposed to give also. So given all of this, that they have, they are in a situation where if they have to import the next week's ration, so to say, how do they do it? So I think that's, that's where they need international legitimacy. And therefore, they're willing to talk to other forces in Afghanistan, particularly the people like Karzai, uh, Abdullah Abdullah and Abdullah Abdullah, who have been a part of the uh, government which was backed by the United States at one point of time. All the changes Taliban is showing in terms of negotiations with these parties seem to indicate they want an interim government which should sa have some legitimacy and not only a Taliban government. Of course, they hold the whip hand because they militarily control the country. So that is very much there. The second question is what will be the relationship with the surrounding countries? And they have said one statement which I think is very important for the rest of the world, that they will not allow their country to be used against any other country. So therefore, the signal is no Al-Qaeda-like uh, forays, whether it's 9-11 or into other countries, and also a signal that as far as Pakistan is concerned, they will not support any forays into Pakistan either. Question mark. What is Tehreek-e Taliban? Is it a part of Taliban? Is it an you know, independent entity? Those questions remain to be answered. But it's also true that they seem to be making efforts to also sound softer. Right. How real it is, we don't know. But they're talk, talking about women, talking about press freedoms, all of this is there. But of course, they've also kept various, uh, cons you know, uh, shall we say, uh, riders to this question by talking of the Sharia law and so on. But, you know, that's something which a number of Islamic countries have done. So we'll have to see from Saudi Arabia to United Arab Emirates to Iran, the different countries have different versions of this. So I don't think that's a monolithic uh, position at this, at this point. But yes, lots of questions, but it does seem that at least some lessons Taliban has learned a, to sit down with the other sections and try to build a coalition government, even if they hold the whip hand. And the second is at least giving signals no other country uh, will be endangered by forces in, Pakistan, in, in Afghanistan. And that should give some solace to Iran, to the various stans which are in that part of the world, which have neighboring boundaries, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, uh, Tajikistan, and also China. So I think those are uh, things that are to be taken into consideration. But beyond that, at the moment, has the leopard changed its spots? Open question. Absolutely. You mentioned the economic crisis, which is interesting because there are reports that uh, the economy survives because cash used to be sent to Afghanistan every week. And now that many of these supplies have closed, it's a really big question how the most basic thing that is the economy is going to function. But talking about the United States and the West, there's been, of course, a lot of hand-wringing and shock in the West, in the media, 
a lot of attempts at self reflection and you know talk about how they failed the afghans and all which ignores their inglorious history over the past many decades but i think the key question right now is that will the U us and the western powers say united kingdom germany do you see them actually having at this point any kind of say or a role in how the situation in afghanistan develops bluntly put they don't have a role at the moment because none of the countries in its uh, surrounding area are going to play ball with them the only possibility was pakistan i don't think even they are willing now to be a front for nato anymore on this they have their independent stake they're also worried about the possible uh, influence it might have in pakistan particularly taliban talibanization of pakistan is not something they would also desire so i think it's an open question that what pakistan may or may not do but i don't think there is any other country in that region which is going to play ball with the nato giving them a toe hold us tried to do this with their uh, quad 2 proposal where they wanted to get uzbekistan tajikistan pakistan and united states have some role over there there is a possibility of trying to use turkey for this turkey wants to play an independent hand it's very clear so given all of this i don't see nato being able to play much of a role here and when you ask that question we should also be very clear that the invasion of afghanistan was partly to make george bush a war hero right. at a very low cost that's what he thought they didn't think it will go on for 20 years they won victory in 2025 days if you remember against iraq also he had proclaimed victory in very a couple of weeks right. so given that the fact that these wars have lasted so long we should also think why was it that the united states and nato was in afghanistan and if you look at the long what is called the great game in central asia i think it was a entry for uh, united states into central asia and that is where they have lost out because they don't have at the moment any access to central asia very easily iran on one side russia on another side china on the other side afghanistan now so i think it's very difficult for them to find an easy gateway into this area and i think that's the biggest strategic change that has taken place for nato and the united states so i don't think afghanistan should be seen only in the uh, in the prism of afghanistan i think you have to take this larger picture picture right. into account so prabir one of the things i think we've often talked about on this show is that how over the years we've seen many of these conflict zones the solutions have finally returned to the region itself all these countries which basically might have issues with each other nonetheless cooperating to try to sort of bring some kind of stability so could you maybe take us to the region that we are seeing right now and especially talk about russia and china and the kind of stakes they have and why what kind of involvement they have and why do they have that you know it's a very interesting question you raise because central asia is somehow forgotten in the world map it is taken for granted there are some stands over there but afghanistan is in the picture iran is in the picture of course china is in the picture and so is russia we tend to forget about this region unless there is a war somewhere over there so if you come to this region now you will see it's a large region it has kazakhstan which is pretty large it has of course iran on one side it has china on the other side and it has russia on top which you don't see over here in this map but all this this entire arc this entire arc that you see that is a very interesting set of countries which will get now drawn into larger global economic uh, network and that is because it's basically where the belt road initiative is to go to pass through so it's going to link on one side with europe the other side will link with china it will also link with iran and it will also link with russia so this is the big picture that we have over here and what you said is absolutely true these countries now have stake in the whole region and it is for them to really resolve the problems of each each other in a cooperative basis because one of the things of land routes are if one country disrupts it then the whole land route gets disrupted so the cooperative nature of the land trade is different from the sea trade which is one to one you go from one port to another is no other country in between so i think this cooperative nature of central asia old silk route if it returns in this form and it links different economies together i think it might change the whole region and therefore it might set in motion forces we are not foreseeing today similarly if we were talking about this 
next region, which is West Asia, which is not here. And you will see now Iran and Saudis have started talking to each other. If we can see a return of politics returning to the regions and not to a large island in the Pacific Atlantic, which is the United States of America, which seems to want to control the whole landmass around the globe, I think this will be a huge change. And let's face it, NATO looks at Atlantic. So it's a transatlantic alliance. And what we are looking at is really the rest of the world. And that is the Eurasian landmass and, of course, Africa. And I think this return of what you said, cooperative politics taking place at the regional level, is very important for Afghanistan because it needs every surrounding country, including India, to be able to bring peace back to Afghanistan. If anybody plays the, plays the spoiler, it might queer the pitch for everybody else and for themselves as well. This is what Pakistan should have learned from the experience earlier, and hopefully others will as well, including India. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Praveen, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click.